first colony stands tall as it celebrates 40 years as a shining example, a notable development in America's real estate history. Along with the state of Texas and Fort Bend County, its overall significance and influence has brought rewards to all of those who participated in its development. On this celebration of 40 years, the Fort Bend community pauses to reflect on an entrepreneurial plan that looked to the future, speculated on growth and opportunity, demanded new heights to ideals that has resulted in a premier master plan community and business concept that continues to drive development today. The fertile land of First Colony is nearly 10,000 acres of the Texas Gulf Coast, where herds of deer, cattle, and buffalo once roamed the tall grasslands and drank from the longest and widest river in the state, the Brazos River, and its many tributaries. Its heritage continued when Stephen F. Austin, an American impresario known as the father of Texas, was granted a Mexican land grant and brought the old 300 settlers to the area after 1821 to settle as the first colony. According to historian T.R. Fehrenbach, Austin and these settlers formed the first Anglo planter gentry in the province. This first colony used the land for homesteads, agricultural planting, livestock grazing, cotton and sugarcane production, and truck farming that would continue for well over a century. Roads and bridges connected the lands, allowed for distribution of crops and enhanced land values. Today, First Colony is celebrating its origin. The property was assembled around the time of the Civil War and changed ownership to Sugarland Industries in 1908. It remained under the same stewardship for more than six decades. Then, in 1972, a joint venture of Gerald D. Hines' interest of Houston and Cousins Properties Incorporated of Atlanta, real estate development and investment company, resulted in the purchase of property in 1973. They purchased nearly 7,500 acres for $43 million, a sale considered one of the largest in the state of Texas. It was in 1978 when Gerald Hines, the founder and chairman of Gerald Hines Interest, addressed the Fort Bend community at the Sugar Creek Country Club and shared the vision with local residents and businesses about his plan for First Colony. We're extremely proud to be part of this community. Sugar Land Properties, Inc. is a developer of First Colony, about 7,500 acres, which will include offices, homes, shopping and recreational facilities, as well as an industrial park. Our idea is to add direct employment, in addition to housing, to this area, such that you have a high quality of life, short commutes, between work and play. By the 1990s, a second parcel of land, 1,800 acres, was purchased and added to the first colony from the notable Frost Ranch, an internationally known property recognized for its registered cattle and horses. Today, First Colony alone has approximately 65,000 residents. Essential to this community was a carefully planned and controlled mixed use of the land including a variety of residential and commercial development, as well as community amenities, schools, libraries, recreational centers, and parks. These all factor into what home buyers cite as what they seek in a neighborhood. The total community concept remains unsurpassed in amenities and conveniences, with over 10,000 residential houses in over 100 attractive neighborhoods across Sugarland and a portion of Missouri City. First Colony evokes a sense of family in a systematically designed community that came with protective guidelines. Uniquely for both a blend of residential neighborhoods and businesses, that's how it was envisioned from the drawing board. Meticulously maintained streets, lakes, parks, green belts, and rigorous architectural guidelines for commercial and retail establishments. What else is unique? First Colony's master plan called for a place where residents could also live and work locally it was never intended to be just a suburb. The live and work concept was later expanded to live, work, shop, play. These four cornerstones of First Colony remain in place today. First Colony's reputation as a model community stems from the vision about unleashing the potential of what could be. Attention to detail is what makes it special. Another attraction is its exceptional schools 
stepping up to meet new demands to serve the children of families moving into these neighborhoods. Fort Bend Independent School District, the seventh largest public school system in the state, kept pace with the community's development and it continues to maintain its high rank standing and reputation for quality schools as a recognized school district by the Texas Education Agency. What's more, it's the largest employer in Fort Bend County and reportedly encompasses some of the wealthiest locales in the state of Texas, which includes First Colony. Tree-lined streets, boulevards, and entrances with the lamppost in First Colony's neighborhoods and businesses alike add to that sense of unity, making them all blend. They belong together. They seem to define the character of the community. It is united and yet culturally diverse. The new America. As a model, this has led the way for other developing neighborhoods' expectations throughout the country. And it also includes attention to physical aspects of the environment. Architectural details, building setbacks, and extensive landscaping. The standards in First Colony for a community that lives, works, shops, and plays together. First Colony's master planning has made it a wonderful place to raise a family. The First Colony Community Services Association, created in 1982 after integrating other homeowners associations that began a little earlier, has been focal in guiding, managing, and maintaining the natural beauty and architectural design integrity of the neighborhoods in First Colony. They are the ones who have been providing the neighborhood amenities and recreational opportunities for the residents. The FCCA also directs the consistent enforcement of deed restrictions all of which help enhance First Colony's property values. In 2012, the FCCA added a $3.7 million aquatic center as another residential recreational opportunity. How's that for fun? Here's something else that's noteworthy. Most of the residential property in First Colony is occupied by its owners, and many of the homes in the First Colony neighborhoods were constructed between 1970 and 1999. A portion of First Colony's annexation was begun by the city of Sugarland, 30 years after the city's incorporation in 1959. The city worked with Sugarland Properties, formed in 1973. Later, Sugarland Properties formed planned community developers and worked to attract businesses to Sugarland and First Colony. This brought tremendous benefits to the area. Development continued to focus on quality of life with mutual economic benefits for both the residents and municipalities in which the neighborhoods are located. This included creating desirable places for corporate relocations. Working and living in First Colony became easier when national corporations such as Floor, Minute Maid, Industrial Info Resources, and regional hospitals established themselves in the First Colony community giving more meaning to the work cornerstone of the area as a great place to both live and work. First Colony also attracted smaller businesses too. And there was the First Colony Mall, which opened in 1996 as a part of the master plan effort. It became the first regional shopping mall in Fort Bend County, boasting a million square feet, and it continues to expand, more recently in 2006. Owned by General Growth Properties, it now has over 140 stores. Next to the mall is Sugarland Town Square. Sugarland Town Square also houses City Hall and the 300-room Marriott Hotel and the impressive conference center. It has a great mix of office space, high-rise residential condominiums, retail stores for shopping, and restaurants. Town Square has a 1.4-acre pedestrian plaza with a majestic and historic centerpiece, a fountain around a bronze sculpture created by local resident Bob Pack. It shows Stephen F. Austin crossing the Brazos River on top of a granite levee, and imprinted on the structure is a historical narrative that tells the discovery of Texas, its earliest settlers, and the perils they faced. Among the latest additions to Town Square are bronze statues created by another resident, Sandy Levin, in 2016. The selfie, in particular, is a whimsical piece that made international news. This area in Sugarland has become a destination business district complete with a city hall, and it was created as a result of a mutually beneficial working relationship between the city of Sugarland and planned community developers. 
Shortly after opening in 2003, Sugarland Town Square earned a 2005 Houston Business Journal Landmark Award for having the best community impact. Sugarland Town Square in First County has become a featured venue and destination point, and it hosts over 200 community events year round, like Movies Under the Moon, dancing with talented instructors, concerts, free fitness classes, singing competitions, something for everyone to enjoy. First Colony proceeded with the Visionary's master planning efforts, adding its own touches, and moving towards the finish line, the last acreage of First Colony property. Hines being a visionary, he developed some major properties, mostly downtown Houston, also of course, he had the Galleria, Post Oak area. And so the next large piece of land was Sugarland Industries property, which eventually became First Colony. To see what this was once upon a time was raw land, pecan orchards, rice fields. And then to see what it is now is a tribute to the people who planted it. And it's really amazing when I look at it that it all turned out that way. I mean, how many things in this world turn out on a plan like that? So I think. The master plan, the term master plan really means something. Sugarland, they were heads and shoulders above all other communities and extremely blessed to have Gerald Hines who basically put them on the map as far as developing a community where you could live, work, shop and play, all inclusive. It was basically Hines was ahead of his time in creating that community where you had it all. I start uh, knowing uh, Sugarland property is when they uh, developing uh, under Heinz uh, uh, for the first colony. At that time, in the uh, late 80s, early 90s, that's the most advanced and modern master plan community in Sugarland, Fort Bend County. So we kept coming back out to first colony. It appealed to us. It was a planned community, and so we found a builder and bought this home. We first moved to First Colony in 1989, and since we've moved here, we have moved actually three times within one mile because we love it so much here. I love the shopping, the convenience of everything, the whole neighborhood feel of First Colony. Wherever you go into whatever store, you see somebody you know. I think there has to be certain standards that meet up to the expectations of the community, and I think uh, you know, in my experience, that they've been uh, flexible and willing to work within your personal taste and still be, you know, you know, look good at the same time. We're in our 10th year here in Town Center. We actually started in the kiosk that's on the plaza, right there in front of City Hall. Shortly after we got into business there, we found out we had so many requests, but we realized it wasn't too long after that that we needed to think about expanding. Levees have two sides to them. We have the Brazos River on one side, and our internal bowl that's created by the uh, levee system. I live about a half a mile from this pump station. Well, I like to say life is grand in Sugarland, uh, and what is grand about Sugarland? First Colony is grand. The SWA came from, from our work in uh, California and across the United States with uh, deep experience in land planning and community planning uh, combined with the design sensitivity of landscape architecture. There were two major moves initially. The dedication of the four corners of the intersection of Highway 6 and 59 to green space. Uh, so that we would not have retail or your typical uh, gas station uh, uh, land use at, at, that, at that intersection. The next big move was to establish the landscape setbacks along Highway 6. Some of the developments, some of the things we wanted to encourage in Sugarland and the type of development that we were looking for uh, was probably a little costlier compared to some of the other competition and so we had to find creative ways of working with Sugarland properties to be able to bring some of those high-end quality projects to Sugarland and still be competitive in the marketplace. Well we, we also did have an advantage though we had a lot of raw property. The, the real challenge is to, to bring the 
corporate community out to Sugar Land and Fort Bend County as a whole. And, and to do that, you had to have the facilities that were equal to Houston. And I think that's another driver of the economic, uh, of the economic picture we try to create. So. And I remember one of our goals from the city council back in the late 90s was to build a community where people could live, work, play, shop. And some of the other attributes that encouraged uh, companies coming to the area with the Sugar Land Municipal Airport.